What is going on, guys? Welcome back to the Football Manager 2023 journeyman series and i know you guys have been following the series have been really holding out uh for the next updates uh I, from my memory i said it in the last episode but i remember leaving a comment as well that uh yeah with the with these videos uh we're probably on a part-time vibe right now uh but we're i'm, gonna, I'm still gonna try and progress through and yeah we're gonna we're gonna see i gotta yeah allocate my time to you know real life things so and just, yeah, other projects that gets me paid and puts food on the table and pays for bills and, uh, yeah, helps me maintain living in a house, basically. That probably wouldn't be the case. It, or not probably, it definitely wouldn't be the case just relying on these videos. So, yes, we shall progress. But I thought this was a time, okay, something notable, right? A player hasn't accepted a contract offer. I'm like, yep, yeah, Sean, it had to be the OG. <laughs> he had the name for it. Even if you don't pronounce it like letters, like OG, like the classic. But oh, we're just going to go. We're going to go with that because he's a legend. <laughs> uh, that's what that would signify. Uh, the fact he rejected the contract and yeah, we're back to playing on a... I'm more zoomed in. I've got, you know, there's there's benefits, there's negatives of the bow side, but the zoom in 110%, you know, I like it. It's, it feels like a bit more in your face and it's good for the videos. But also, before we get into the draw, I yeah, number one, put enough attention on that to Sean because everyone else who's got a contract offer has accepted and he's remained loyal. But you could probably say, I intend on doing the same. And yeah, I probably would want to do that as soon as possible, ASAP as possible, uh, so we can, yeah, move on to a next team and, it, yeah, maybe freshen things up. There's not actually, there's not that many games left in the season. So I'll give you a bit of a roundup. The last few games uh, from the last episode, I'm pretty sure we get that correct. <laughs> These are the ones who played off camera. Not the worst form, because uh, you know my thing has been holding out. Look at that, 5-2 extra time. Steven McAvitt, McAvitt, uh, I, that's how, like I scream that when he scores and it's kind of to tell the opposition. Yeah, McAvitt, <laughs> McAvitt, uh, like they can McAvitt. Yeah, he's he's not too bad, uh, not, too, not too bad at all. We can see, we, we can delve into like other stats here if you want to see the numbers more specifically. Ah, uh, yeah, he's been really, really good. I, t I tend to like these little f facts and figures here. They're more figures. Uh, 21, like, you can just say things so simply. He's been 21 games, 21 goals. So, yeah, keep it keep it nice and simple with his stats. Uh, so the Bally McCash Rangers will be up next. So uh, we'll take a look at that. Like, I thought, like, this is a big game as well. I thought that piece of information with Gallagher, but... First v second, unfortunately, we dropped back with a poor result, and yeah, that's that's pretty much that's pretty much the update in terms of the table. Uh, but where we are also at, back on, go to our profile again, just to remind, uh, rejig your memory. We, ha I'm glad that did get accepted. Starting for national A, a uh, national A. No, not yet, mate. Not yet. You're getting there slowly, slowly. National C license. You, clearly, I want to hurry that process up. <laughs> but we're maintaining a pretty good... Like, only B. We were untouchable at some point. Was that just because we dropped from first to second? Gosh, so that gives us a reason. I'd love to finish this season on untouchable, but with the players we've, we've lost, the squad isn't... Like, it's not bad. Funnily enough, we got Evan Fogarty back. We were looking for another center back. I don't even know if I've got the settings still there. Um, as you can see, no scouting range, money in mind. Uh, what we were, what were we looking at? Yeah, we were, no, I was looking for a goalkeeper, actually. Uh, so we did make uh, a few changes, as you can see. McCann on loan there, because also we're preparing. Um, it's Hunter. Did he got? Oh, he must have rejected it as well, which is good because clear. Hold up, hold up. We got to update. We got to update you. Like if we go to the transfers, you just 
it's laid out a bit more, just a little bit more clearly uh, from the types that have left. If you go to Michael McAvitt, that McAvitt, um, yeah, we are happy enough uh, to have him uh, to have him go. But this is a more rounded up here. Yeah, who's left in January? So it was that Kevin Anderson, the experienced lad, uh, let him go. Well, not let him go. He accepted a contract and we couldn't offer a contract because of the wage. Uh, yeah, Ross Matier. So we lost one of the goalkeepers, but we essentially have that one main guy who's yeah top rated as a best keeper. Oyson Nix. I felt he was a lot on the bench. Let's rejig the memory. Um, yeah, well, yeah, we, we definitely got that correct. He didn't really get much appearance at all. He didn't get any appearance. Uh, and then Adam Campbell, you look at it like that, you're like, okay, like, right back. He had a couple good attributes, his fitness and determination, which, yeah, that's all right. Uh, if we head back, Cameo Scott has been a very nice signing. I t I've talked about in previous, say, I don't need to go over it because our long-term <laughs> um, long plans is not even going to be at this club. But, no, nah, he, he, he's been really good. He's been really good this season. Uh, good, a very nice capture with those assists. If you go back home, uh, he's up there. He's got the most assists uh, for us and back on McCavitt. Uh, so he was someone good to bring in. Yeah, Lewis Hunter, uh, I think I think there was interest for him uh, because I was worried. Uh, maybe I just wanted that backup as well. Um, yeah, but bringing in McCann, who, uh, Harry Wiley starting to get some games now. He's actually got a couple goals. His, he came in and right away, that was actually his first game and uh, scored that brace from a center half, Harry Wiley, without knowing a whole lot about him. Like, yeah, he's just been in Northern Ireland. It just when you when you come in like that, and you get it you want to get a bit of storyline behind that, but you, you just feel like he could be he could be something good. And yeah. <laughs> His name adds something to it. Like Harry Wiley sounds like a cool name. Um so we'll have to see uh how he comes along. But I thought the Evan Fogarty factor, egg that's easy enough to say, uh he came back. Blight, they wanted to, they recalled him, and then they're like, nah, you can have him back. Well, not not in that fashion, but I was looking for another centre-back on loan, and he was, you know, how I searched with the attributes to find the best option. Uh, yeah, he, w he was up there, and there was a few other guys where their attributes weren't so consistent. You see how he's, yeah, he hasn't got, out of his important attributes for a centre-back, you can see there, like, he hasn't got too many lower ones. What I mean is, like, five and below, and there was a few other options like that. So, uh, yeah, that's all we really had to do at this point. That's no real no real other changes. If we just take a look at the whole team right now, you go to our under-18s, it's looking, it's looking very bare. There's no amazing talents. you got a Gorman in there, uh, Tyler Gorman, a young striker, and yeah, if we need one, you know, we can call him up uh, and see what he can do. Uh, Harold Essien, who's only on loan. So, yeah, that, I'll give you a nice little roundup of how, where the squad's looking. Uh, but where we are at, we're going to play this next game. That rounds up January. We are probably going to round up the rest of the season, uh, depending how things uh, play out. And again, back to my situation right now, if I can actually get on FM and play it that much. Uh, but we're a few days until this next game. Uh, but the cup is going to be it. Uh, I didn't even go, uh, like, my mind's not even in the cup draw. Into, we're not, yeah, we're not playing too much of that, or we're not paying too much attention on that, um, yeah, on our minds at the moment. So, Ballam and Cash Rangers, yeah, this is going to be a big game. We'll show you where we're at at the current point in the season. I think if we finish in the top two, though, I think, yeah, it will be a very successful season. But let's go out there, get that like get that top position back by beating him, you know, on our own turf. There's no reason why we shouldn't, apart from the fact they're probably looking like the best team so far in the season. I'm like, there's no reason why we shouldn't win this, um, yeah, apart from them being in great form. So that's a fair enough reason. Let's go head into that match, why don't we? And here you go. He's a wanted man, Sean. Of course, he's he's one of our better players. And I like how, well, not that I like their eyeing him, but the fact that I'm not sure it's just a coincidence. If we're struggling, it would be the same. But it's like we're the next 
competitor and they're trying to take one man off of us. Uh, but yeah, hopefully he's still on the same page and doesn't jump ship. But th I'm, that's me temporarily saying that because I'm intending to do the same thing. So it's not that I have an offer though, but <laughs> yeah, it's because of this. It's not been fun. Sure, it's been a struggle. You're only... I don't like when we're replacing it with loans because that's all we can really afford. Uh, loans that are not really wanting money. Uh, the club's not wanting money anyway. So, yeah, it doesn't feel yeah it doesn't feel like we're building our own team at the moment uh, for the long term. So, yeah, it all makes sense. It's all about just yeah ticking off our first job and yeah doing it pretty efficiently, uh, reaching our objectives and maybe just yeah doing a little bit above that. So, <laughs> yeah, we know that already. So here we go, second v first. We want to be that team that described this first, though. We want to take over that mantle. We've had, like, it's not like we've dropped off our form completely. Uh, it's been a competitive season uh, for ourselves, but and I think, yeah, I think we're playing uh, pretty well additionally. So we're just going to add a couple others. We'll add Clark, just add a bit of width. We don't, you don't need, you don't need too many defenders on the bench, do you? Uh, so I think a right back and a centre back will be uh, will be enough for us, and we can head into the game like that. Uh, we got we got our strength players there. I like in the the each position we got a strong player, like the goalkeeper uh, above that like two or like that one and a half two star rating. You got Hunter in goals, then you got Snodden as one of the centre halves, and then the midfield. Well, to be honest, we've got two there and we got them both. Yeah, so in the mid, yeah, in the mid area of the pitch, we are actually very, very strong uh, with Cohen and the Gallagher, the OG, and then McCovert up top. And then whereas like Downey, only a two star player, uh, he's to me, he plays above that description again, pretty balanced. And yeah, he finishes a lot of our good work. He's labeled as a winger. Uh, but he's natural as a winger as a, and a striker as well. He and McCavitt, as you can see, the strongest link really in the team. So, uh, yeah, things are like the that's looking good. I think what we've developed throughout the season, uh, despite losing players, I think still our best eleven there. You can go out and get results, and I mean, yeah, we have done for the most part. So, let's keep doing that as we get into the match. So it's huge. Oh, and that Kiki. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, we noticed he was, yeah, top of the goals. Yeah, he's been scoring. As you expect, the team that's top of the league. Uh, yeah, they man, their main man up top. Okay, the conditions right now. And, yeah, I, I, like our, I like our team on paper too. You see a lot of faces there, <laughs> which is always nice. So here we go. Again, I talked about the strengths. All right. The conditions. It, it, it brings a bit... It's like something different. It's nice to see like for a video as well, I suppose, uh, from your perspective. It's like when you get to that time of the season anyway, uh, in your own saves, as Edgar picks up a yellow card, uh, we are just going to address that and we'll ease off tackles. But yeah, not too, not too bad there. Easy enough. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm fairly confident. Uh, look at the possession. I think we're gonna encourage a bit. I think especially we don't. We don't want to lose this. But uh, Tommins could be dangerous. Hunter. So he's a really safe keeper for me. I'd worry if we if we had one of our two star maximum ratings uh, as you know as your goalkeeper, but you're pretty confident. I know they can like it's when you want to when you're like when you want to keep it nice and simple and not over analyze too much. We can go into it right now, but it's gonna it's gonna back up that. They've like, got good reflexes, error reach, eccentricity is always up there as a maybe an attribute you don't want to have too high as a goalkeeper, but if your decision making is a solid attribute, that those kind of go hand in hand. But I've always liked my goalkeepers to have low eccentricity. Uh, you know, just you keep it nice and standard. But if they were to have good decisions and yeah, they could be like a unique player for you. They'd be like, you know, some people won't like them, but 
yeah, as long as they've got good decision making, if they had trash decision making high centricity, I'm not going to be using them or I'm not going to be confident about you having them in the team, uh, not for uh, too long into the future anyway. And yeah, I'd be a bit concerned. But yeah, to give you a bit of details and my thoughts on that, <laughs> we've been the better team here. I feel like we just need it. Yeah, we just need to be, give them a bit of a kick though. Uh, that's not going to make sense. Like, do we just we'll go point fing I, I know what I wanted to do. Uh, it's probably a bit better. The defense is upset, but yeah, I wanted to boost their morale. So probably telling them they weren't doing that great. But like Snodden gets fired up. How come he got fired up and the others got demotivated? I mean, some people see it as good. But I've been saying sometimes like team talks don't even make sense. You can come out and just hit, like if we we're going to put it in percentages and thank you very much FM for making my point. I guess McCavitt is a big goal scorer. If we're going to put it down to percentages and this is absolute guess slash my experience of playing football manager for years, 10 plus years. I'm going to go team talks and shouts are like 10 to 15% max. Tactics, form, and player quality, it makes up the rest. You can overanalyze, you know, and I used to oh, worry so much, like, oh, no, my players are red. Oh, no, in the team talk, you got a red. I'm, a red. I'm like, man the frick up. Man up. Is that really what... You, like, nowadays, I'm not, like... Like, no, as long as your tactics are good, especially, look at that top of the table now. Send them, send them where they belong, below us. Come on. So Downey now, he's on that yellow. He's not the strongest. We can rotate. Even though I've been saying he's he scored goals this season, but when's that the case? Uh, yeah, we'll bring on Darren McGrath. We're in the lower reaches. Like, you're finished. When you've got a couple good attributes, like 14, they're not bad, honestly. 14 heading, 14 finishing. And yeah, when we got them more zoomed in, we'll go into the stats. You'll be noticing, yeah, to be fair, we've been playing him like this. And he hasn't put a goal in the back of the net. Do you know what that means? Like, he, he he's probably due. He, he, he's probably due to do that. Like, come on, mate. <laughs> <laughs> we want to see a bit of action and even yeah McCartan as well will bring on Rui Alves look at it hasn't got the greatest rating but yeah you know bring we, we try and look at the positives in him you know he's got a bit of pace admittedly hasn't got a lot of a uh, lot else to really scream and shout about actually if we take a look at James Clark yeah like they're b both really nothing to scream and shout about so about Really just getting the fresher legs on. When there's one goal in the game, though, you you need another. I like to think uh, home fans that have travelled in there, they wouldn't have, have to travel too much at home, but I'm just trying to make a reference to the crowds not being huge at this level. And really, really, your striker is smashing in goals. You need, you, he, you need him to round up the game there. You need him to finish it off. Like, mate, come on, Graham Edgar, we don't really have much, we don't, yeah, McGarry, a bit of determination to come on, I'm like, no, nah, I want to seal this game, seal this result, you look at Chris McMahon as well, he's a little bit more balanced and experienced, even though that two-star rating uh, can come in uh, ball playing, which we'll go into the tactics, so Gallagher, oh, it's so tough, man. Like, no, I don't want to take him on. No one else is too desperately tired. So, that, like, to me, that's another thing. In the past, like, oh, make all subs. Or you'd, you'd, you'd be, it'd almost become like a habit. Uh, you don't always have to make, there would be a point where this will never be the case. What we're going to do here is play out the whole game without making an additional sub. And it, it feels like, yeah, a game. That's why we're not making any tactical changes here. It feels like a game. It's, you're just going to play it out. You're pretty... Oh, no, but it's a corner. It's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Better not. Better not. That would have been just set piece settings, though. So either way, yeah. If you, if you switch up your tactic, it could refresh. 
uh, even if it's just a handful of instructions or like two or three instructions, could refresh what's going to happen. We just don't need that. McGrath's probably going to be offside there. Is he offside? No. But he see, he did the right thing. That's what I would tell my, what I what I wish my players would do. He's like, just go, kick it out. Don't try and do anything too special, pass it and mess it up, and they counter you for the last chance of the game and they kill mate. Like that's the no nonsense stuff. I'm not sure if he actually maybe tried to score, but in the end, something like that actually works out. So in that top of the table clash, we take our spot back, rightfully so. And I think, as I've been saying, it would be amazing if we could play that out like for the rest of the season with yeah, how we're losing players. If you can manage to still take top, I think, yeah, uh, that would be absolutely amazing. And like I said, they had top goal scorer. And what, where, what, where were you, mate? Where were you? Galumi. Galumi, is that right? You're the top goal scorer. See, we've got versatility. Even though Downey didn't do too much, I'd prefer that any day of the week. Any day of the week. One leading goal scorer. What happens if he's having a day off? Day off. What do you want, mate? What do you want? And then you got McCartan in there for the assists. Uh, not too bad. He was that early capture, wasn't he, as a youth player? Oh, that's something you would get excited about. It's not too often where it's different. It's different when you're in maybe the uh, the higher reaches. Uh, you you that those regens you could pick up, or for the OGs, new gens, <laughs> regens or new gens, the ones at the very start of the save, not superstars, but they could have the potential to be superstars of the lower reaches <laughs> of those lower divisions. So, uh, yeah, where you can see his uh, potential could improve a lot. Um, and he's showing that right now. Uh, once more, we'll go back to the stats. And not crazy, right? But he, he's put in shifts, like, as you would expect only from a 16-year-old. But I don't know. He's, he's showing the right signs. And I like to analyze sometimes things that may not be important. And you're like, that's not going to matter. Uh, I'm like... It, like he's got a beard, pretty strong at 16. You're like, don't even talk about that. That doesn't matter. But it's part of the story building. <laughs> it's the part of the story building of the save. And it comes with aggression as well. You're like, that's not going to link. But, mate, he's got that strong beard at 16. He's an intimidating type of lad. That's that's how we're going to build it up, even though he's only uh, 58 uh, kilos, maybe not so intimidating physically with that strength as well, but on the pitch he might be. And yeah, he's heading the right way, those attributes. That, that's pretty nice to see, I'm not going to lie. Uh, again, so someone like him, is there's where there was small portions, like Cameo Scott as well, McCavitt, who's only 25, yeah, seal him, you know, let's lock him down on a contract. You know you got a good strike. He hasn't got so much growth potential, but, yeah, he, you know you got a good man there uh, who's going to put in the goals, uh, like he's shown, and a few other names. Yeah, look at the guys in the early 20s. Keep in mind, uh, there's a few on loan uh, in their late teens, but, yeah, there would, like, Snodden, who's only 20 as well. I'm not going to get you too attached to this team and players, but I'm saying... There, there could have been that if things were a little bit different, if money was a bit different and, yeah, a bit more in the higher reaches. I'm saying that so much in this episode, lower reaches or higher reaches. Uh, Nathan Riddle, okay, uh, he's 38. Uh, probably not not someone to get too excited about. Even, oh, Nick's encourages long shots. Yeah, at this point, like, just take the long shots. Like we saw late, it didn't, like it prevented a late uh, countering chance but apart from trying to really play it really concisely with the passes. So I think this one, yeah, this episode uh, went pretty well, went efficiently. Uh, we just want to round up the season now. Uh, it was That was a good game. And, yeah, it, it showed a really compact style. See, what I mean about that when I say compact is like, we 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 look confident in our game, not letting the opposition have too many clear chances. Sure, they could have got a, like converted a late corner, and we lose the three points. So you got to make sure you're still taking your own chances. So 
back to a a, a negative <laughs> an a negative and the job security untouchable uh, that that's why that top position i think it tells the difference and uh, you look at look we just be competitive here already ticked off and maybe in yeah the the bet mclean cup because that's desired that's not too bad that's not too far off and yeah how we done in yeah these couple cups there a uh, couple cups there you go um yeah we we haven't really got negative like we got but 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 the wage budget mate did you want me to sign absolutely no one we brought in Cameo Scott, and that took us over to spending all of our budget. We're barely over it. Like, I don't think my job's going to be justified off that. Like, yeah. But you never know. The stump, like, yeah, what I mean is our job security is still untouchable. So I feel like no matter what your, like, finance stuff is, if you do well and overachieve in the league, that takes priority. Like, job security untouchable. Would that be the same if you had this, a struggling note, <laughs> a status for a required importance for your success, like your performance type things? I don't think you would. If we had that under our lead, avoid relegation, like I think it would be very different. Even though that says required, it's interesting. I, I, there's something different there. If you go to the supporters, they see us A plus as well. So you see what they want. It's just just to remain in the league, and we're clearly doing that. So I like that this year. You know, there was some criticism early on release. I think as there always is. Um, we have high expectations for Football Manager because for some people, it's like, especially me as well. Like it's a game that's you have above everything else. It's like it's class. And yeah, it's just, it's what, it's our favorite game basically. So you want it to always be mind blowing. So when it, it's not that for some people, uh, because if it seems the same as previous years, they're going to criticize it because our expect, we have, that's it. This is going to be a perfect way to round things up. We have an importance of required for football manager each year so when there's not features that blow our minds when we're not happy but i think that's unrealistic because they've perfected the game over year over the years that's why i want to shout out to sports interactive they've perfected it over the years so they don't want to switch it up too much so they're adding these neat little features like we talked about they it just it's like little cherries on top it's it, that's all the game needs now. They don't need to add robots and flying insects. And I'm just saying random stuff here. Um, it, 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 cricket bats. The, 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 the <laughs> those are things that are not needed in football management sim. International management can be touched on. I'll get my criticism in there. Work on international management. So I'm just not praising them or doing whatever to them as like <laughs> like yeah like sucking up to them and that type of stuff uh but you know you know the game is good i'm not, I'm not sure why I, I didn't expect to go on to this conversation but you know we just led into that i'm enjoying the game i could be playing it a bit more but as i said some other stuff taking a bit priority um um you know so we can feed ourselves. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy. enjoy. See, when I'm recording an episode, my mind gets grinding. And then like I'm like, oh, my God, I want to play a save or I'm recording every single day. And then you know, I wake up tomorrow and I'm not even able to get an FM. It, it, it's such a yeah different thing. So I think I get in my old school ways. Yeah, um, we do some lower league management stuff, which I know some of you guys really enjoyed back in the day, the Bar City days and all that. I feel like that's always something to look back on. But uh, yeah, uh, there's always a part, just that end of an episode where we talk a lot and it is kind of reliving. And yeah, yeah, thinking about going back to those times. But yeah, a lot has changed since then on YouTube and just in the football manager scene. Uh, but yeah, I think I'll have to leave it there. That's something I do need to get better at, but Hey, it's always it's always what I've been like. If you watch me for a long time, I like to maybe explain things at the video at the end of the video, get things off my mind, let you guys know how I'm feeling anyway uh, about uh, certain things. But 
anyway, I want to, uh, I want to hopefully uh, get as many videos as I can out for this series. And as I said, moving to another team, how I think I will play this out. As I said, we'll we'll fast track to the end of the season, and then we'll do the job hunting in the episode. I'm not going to be like suddenly just appearing at a new club that you don't know who they are. But yeah, I think we're going to round up the episode here and yeah, we'll, we'll fast track to the end of the season, hopefully round up top of the league and yeah, uh, we can leave on a good note and then we can move on to the next club and we'll be figuring out who it will be. We'll do a bit of a search. I think that'll be fun. That'll be fun. But yeah, appreciate you guys still showing love to the videos. Uh, even I'm not going to be like, oh, if you haven't, been, if like you want to see more, catch me on live stream on Twitch. I haven't even been streaming uh, much lately. I need a bit more hours in the day, to be honest. So yeah, um, I'm I'm liking where we are right now, though. I um, mean, like, even if you haven't been uploading so much, but it's like, uh, yeah, it's with like got so many other stuff happening. I've been thinking a lot behind the scenes. Like, I've been I talked to a couple people I say, um. Like, if you guys want to, like, you can call me John, which is my real name. I, like, I feel a bit detached from the name Footy Manager TV, but after this long, it's strange to just change your name. So I'm in a bit of a limbo with that as well. Like, when people call me that, or just Footy as well, like, that's not my name. So, I, and it's not really a nickname for me. So it's like, I feel detached from it, which that's played on my mind a little bit. So, yeah, I don't really know uh, about that. I feel like you got to always stick true to your name, though. But see, it's I feel like yeah, uh, the more time that passes, and I've done um, other things, uh, yeah, I'll say I've done other things online, which have I suppose had a more personal name to me, uh, and it's like I've become a little detached to at least being known as like footy or something like that. Like I don't feel a attachment to that name, uh, if that makes it at least by knowing me personally. So. Anyway, I'm going to round it up there. I could keep talking for ages, but yeah, hopefully you understand all of that and I'll catch you guys next time.